Living by faith is our subject, part two. Living by faith. The objective, before I go to the objective, look at the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 he said, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The Lord bless his word. Living by faith, part two. Our objective in this study is to understand the preservation power of faith. That is the capacity of faith to keep a person alive. And our next objective is tapping into the preservation power of faith. Tapping into the preservation power of faith. The just shall live by faith means the life of the just hangs on his faith. The life of the just is determined by his faith. A man that is not interested in his faith is not interested in his life. For there is a direct relationship between faith and life. If the just can live by his faith, it means that the absence of faith can jeopardize life. It means that life is in jeopardy. When faith is epileptic. So there are five things we want to take home from here. Concerning the subject of the just shall live by faith. Number one. The life of the just. Or rather the welfare of the just on earth. Is anchored on his faith. This is general with the first service. The welfare of the just on the earth. How well you fare in life is determined by your faith. Number two. The quality of the life of the just on earth is anchored on his faith. Whether that life will be a qualitative life or the life will be just a management life is anchored on his faith. Thirdly, the faith of the just on earth is anchored on his faith. The faith, what becomes of him, is anchored on his faith. One day I was in the healing and deliverance service. 
And the Lord revealed to me that a woman was going to travel. Someone was going to travel to the Far East. Far East, China area. And that I should pray for the person. And I called, made a call and a woman came out. She was traveling that Friday according to the word, of, the word that came. That Friday she was going to travel to China. So, and she traveled. And I prayed for her because the Lord wanted me to pray for her, for her to go safely and return back safely. So after I finished praying, I said to her, see you when you come back. So she traveled. Journey between China and Dubai. I think it's six, seven hours flight. The plane began to have problem in the air. All of a sudden, the pilot said, I'm out of touch with the control tower. Before long, he said, they should get ready for a crash or something like that. People were screaming everywhere. Somebody said, oh, so, well, the person seated near to this woman said, so, we are going to die just like that. And the woman stood up from her seat and screamed, if you are about to die, I am not about to die. My pastor said, see you when you come back. And he will see me as I go back. And she began to blast in tongues. Currently the flight has dropped in altitude. Within five minutes it dropped by about 10,000 feet. Falling like stone. Long story made short. Please take your seat. God intervened. The pilot took God control. And then the flight landed later. She said people came, shook hands with her and so on. But she didn't come to testify. One year later, by about 4 a.m., someone walked into her room, tapped her. It was an angel. And he said, today is one year exactly when God sent us on assignment to prevent you from dying. To preserve your life in response to your pastor's declaration. And you have not testified. Say, today is Sunday. Go and testify. That was how she came and testified. And we heard the story. Otherwise, we would not have heard. Your faith determines your faith. The faith of the just is anchored on their faith. Take your seat. She stood up and said, I am not about to die. The faith of the just on earth is anchored on his faith. Number four. The future of the just on earth is anchored on his faith. The just shall live by faith means the future of the man is determined by his faith. Whether he has a future that is positive or a future that is negative is going to be determined by his faith. And, final, and number five, the longevity of the just, how long he lasts, is anchored on his faith. The just shall live by his faith. That the witch, the wizard, the occult, the force of darkness that can take a man or a woman of faith out before their time is not found. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. amen. How does faith do it? How does faith determine the life of the just? Number one. Faith in God is the top root that draws on the life of God. And I'm going to use one or two illustrations. Top root that draws on the life of God. 
We already read Romans chapter 1 verse 17 and then Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. This is another way to say it. Faith in God is a supernatural wire that transmits divine life from divinity to humanity. Faith in God is a supernatural wire. A spiritual is like a spiritual cable that transmits divine life from divinity to humanity. When your faith is alive, there is connectivity with divinity. Faith brings you, brings you at par with your maker. You are connected. What are we talking about? The life of God that is indestructible, that is not wasteable by a witch, that is not wasteable by wicked powers. That life is connectable by faith. That is why they say by faith, Enoch was translated. By faith, Elijah operated. Take it, it. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Back up to verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the hallowed Rahab perished not. You see, faith has the power to keep a person alive with the life of God. She perished not with them that believed not. So those who believe not are easily perishable, easily wasteable, and still going on. When she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. They tapped into the life of God, wrote righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire. People pass through fire as if they were spirits. You don't understand what I'm saying? Human beings can be burnt by fire. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not burnable. Because they tapped into the life of God. And divine life is not consumable by fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness we are made strong. They was valiant in fight. They turned to flight. The armies of the aliens. Take your seat. Through faith, women receive their dead back to life. Am I communicating at all? Can stop them. Hallelujah. Faith. So faith equals connectivity. The absence of faith is the lack of connectivity. How many of you have experienced your phone before that lacked connectivity? Lack of connectivity. Faith is the taproot that draws on the life of God. Number two, faith in God draws on the unbeatable strength of God. Faith men are strong men. Faith women are strong women. In First Corinthians chapter 16 and in verse 13. First Corinthians 16, 13 it says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Where there is faith, there is strength. 
in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 11 the Bible said through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed somebody say strength and what does strength do for you strength causes you to win to win victory in battles that was why the Bible said if you faint in the day of adversity, Proverbs 24 and in verse 10, your strength is small. Am I communicating? Faith makes you unbeatable. This is how to see it. Faith is the capsule that transmits divine strength. When you swallow faith, you gather strength. Mashatakalabaya. Strength. One of you can be equal to a, the whole village. A whole community of witches rose and they couldn't floor you by virtue of unbeatable strength. Kadagelete frete kakasaka. Jata koko baga late frete keke sikidaga. Jagogo barata katakalita. Somebody says strength. When you see people cry all the time for affliction and cry all the time for oppression, it is strength that is lacking. When your strength increases, your victory multiplies. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Lift your right and say, I receive strength. I receive By faith, I receive strength. A man of faith, a woman of faith may be small physically but dangerous spiritually. Very rugged. Very, very resilient. Unbeatable, indefatigable, indomitable, unfightable. Someone say amen. amen. Take your seat. Number three. Faith in God makes our victory to be won before our battles arrive. I will say two things I didn't say in the first service. First John chapter 4 verse 4. For whatsoever say you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them before they arrived, you overcame them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And who is that who is that greater one? Is Jesus. With what does he make you to overcome? First John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Listen to this. Your faith keeps you in the victory mode and keeps the enemy in the defeat mode. Ooh. You, you operate, you exist, you function, you move in the victory mode. And the enemy is established in the defeat mode. That is the enemy was defeated before he confronted you. That is he won the battle before you faced the battle. Let me say it like this. Faith in God makes you to win battles without firing a shot. I stand here to announce to somebody every current battle in your life is, is won in your favor. Every current battle of your life is decided in your favor. I prophesy in the name of Jesus the last time you lost a battle shall be the last time forever. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. The loudmost, amen. amen. T 
take your seat. Faith in God. Number four. Faith in God fortifies and shields our lives and those of our loved ones against the arrows and missiles or the enemy. Faith in God fortifies and shields our lives and those of our loved ones against the arrows and missiles of the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith we are with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. See Job chapter 1 verse 10. Satan was talking to God and he said, have you not made a hedge around him? Around his house? Around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. You have surrounded Job and made him unharmable. Let me say this. Faith in God prevents people from easy wastability. Did you hear that English? Easy wastability. You are not easily wasteable. You are not a perishable material. Hey! Lift your right and say, I am not easily wasteable. I am not easily wasteable. I am not a perishable material. My faith in God makes me solid. I am not vulnerable. I am not wasteable. Shout the loudest, amen. of faith wherein you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Somebody take your seat. Psalm 91 verse 1 all the way to verse 4. Verse 1 all the way to verse 4. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. And his truth which is his light which is the food of faith shall be thy shield and thy buckler. That light, that rema, the word of God you know that is the basis of faith, it fences off arrows of destruction. Someone say amen. amen. If you believe you shall fulfill your day, say amen. amen. I don't care how many people died before their time in your family. If you know you shall fulfill your days, shout the loudest, say amen. Shout the louder believers, amen. amen. Lift your right and say, I, I shall fulfill my days. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Faith in God fortifies and shields our lives and those of our loved ones. And finally, Faith in God is key to wholeness. 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 Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. 15, 28. The woman, the Greek Syrophoenician woman that had her daughter sick, 
that Jesus said it's not good to give the food to dogs. Jesus answered and said, Oh woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Faith makes whole. Faith makes whole. Matthew chapter 5 verse 34. The woman with the issue of blood. Sorry, Mark 5 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. And be whole of thy plague. Somebody say amen. Wholeness means the devil is not licensed to steal from you. Nothing missing, lacking, broken, stolen. Not your peace, not your joy, not your favor, not your life. Faith is key to recovery and restoration. In case the enemy has taken anything from you. Tonight is the night of restoration. Can someone give a believer's amen? A louder believer's amen. You believe that tonight is your night of restoration. Let your amen be louder. As we go on, very, very quickly, take your seat. How do you tap the preservation power of faith? How do you tap into the preservation power of faith? <laughs> Number one, know what to believe. Know what to believe. I like you to understand that faith is based on substance. Faith has substance. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith has substance. I like us to understand that faith is not blind belief. <laughs> you know, some time ago, somebody went to the zoo in Ibadan. And he said he's going to enter the lion's den. Like Daniel entered. And Daniel was not consumed. And he stepped into the lion's den. A lion looked at him. And he said, what kind of prayer did I pray? That God brought me food like this. <laughs> he didn't return to tell any story. Present day Daniel. What kind of prayer did I pray for God to send me free meat like this? Was that how Daniel entered the lion's den? Daniel did not decide to enter the lion's den. Daniel was confronted with challenges that threw him into the lion's den because of his faith in God. And God came into the lion's den to say, You cannot believe me. And be eaten by lions. Hello? Somebody goes and carries a snake on his hand. And he says. He says if I carry a snake it will not harm me. See you shall trade on serpents and scorpions. Not that you saw a snake and say let me put my leg in it. That is by mistake. You didn't know. You marched on snake. It won't do you anything. But you saw it with your two eyes. I said, snake, I want to confirm the scripture. The snake will confirm your stupidity. <laughs> it will confirm your stupidity. And confirm your ignorance. Am I communicating? Take your seat. Faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. The substance of faith is the word. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing. 
you will ask God to show you which particular word guarantees that you can't be killed before your time. Hello? I saw a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 verse, chapter 2 verse 9 that Jesus tasted death for me. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death. That is substance. He tasted death for every man and that includes who? Me. So he died young that I might live long. I have the audacity to believe in that. That the wicked agent of the devil that can take me out before my time, they have not born his father. Will never be born. Never. Substance. See, as a standing shock of corn, you are not permitted to be harvested until it is time. Doesn't matter the wheat crap background of your family. Know what to believe. Take your seat. Number two, if you want to tap into the preservation of faith, believe what you know. Have you known what to believe? Believe it. Take the matter personal. Behave as if it was only you God spoke to when they wrote that passage. Efekodaya gagabana sititi. Tekwa, kakwa, satwa, kakadigasa. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! Look at your neighbor, say, believe what you know. Say it louder, believe what you know. Loudest, believe what you know. Take your feet in the presence of the Lord. Believe it. Believe what you know. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must. Must believe. If you have anything to do with God, you must believe. You must believe deliciously. You know what house some people call dole? Deliciously. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say you must believe. He that cometh to God must. You must believe that your destiny is not in the hand of a man. So no man can determine your destiny. You must believe. That since nobody determines where you were born, nobody can determine where you will go. Since where you were born is not in the hands of a man, where you will go is not in the hands of a man. Hey! You must believe. Somebody sees a bad dream and said, I'm so sorry, I saw this kind of revelation in the night. And I said, and what did you do about it? He said, I, pray, he said, I prayed about it. I said, okay, it is not happenable. It is not what? What, what you saw cannot happen. I saw worse things for myself that didn't happen. That couldn't happen. Worse things that the devil showed me. Then who are you to dream for me? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Our father in the Lord, Papa Yedebo said, he dreamt one night where <laughs> the, the devil was showing him and said he was in the grave. They were trying to, and he told the devil, say, You are stupid. 
Can somebody be dead and still be standing and be watching? And, then, <laughs> and, he, and he's, all, he's seen the funeral and he's seen the burial. So you are stupid. You don't, you don't know who you are dealing with. <laughs> hey! Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Believe what you know. That if God said this is what it is, one billion demons can't say otherwise. They can't say otherwise. They can't determine otherwise. If God said this is what it is. You know one day, I told it in the first service. I dreamt a dream one night. Saw a very de- devilish devil. With greenish eyes with devilish. And he was telling him, himself. His own date of death. Not mine. And he gave it one date. That was literally like a date. That was just before a particular convention. Of that year. And I look at the devil. I say you are a bastard. For your information, I won't do anything about the dream. So I didn't even share it with my wife. To yearize the devil. To show him the nothingness of himself. Because God cannot say something and he says otherwise. I don't need to consult him to know my days on earth. When the date has come, he showed me almost five months or more ahead. When the date has come and the date has passed, where, where? Te, te. Like three months, five, I can't remember the exact. That was when I was telling my wife. Can you see what the bastard showed me some time ago? Because I didn't, there was no need to tell her to let the devil know it's not important enough to inform anybody. If it is some people who say, uh, honey, I saw something. Oh. <laughs> in fact, what I saw, eh? I don't know how it is. But in case anything happened, oh. <laughs> somebody say, God forbid. <laughs> there are some people who just begin to look for who will join fear with their fear. <laughs> so, I dreamt something very terrible. Just join your faith with mine. It's not fear. It's not faith. <laughs> but that will never be your portion. Yeah. Know what you believe. And then believe. Just hold it. Believe what you know means conviction beyond confusion. That is, you are so convinced, you can't be confused. You can't be confused by a devil. You can't be confused by anybody's vision or dream or revelation. You can't be confused by a symptom. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Know what you believe. Believe what you know. Thirdly, think what you believe. Think it. Dwell on your belief. Don't dwell on your fear. Dwell on your belief. Don't dwell on your worry. Dwell on your belief. Don't dwell on your anxiety. That is part of your faith. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. So your faith, faith is a mindset. You can't believe for life and be thinking on death. You can't be believing for victory and be focused on defeat. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Refuse to dwell. Let the scriptures form your picture. Habakkuk chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. I will stand upon my watch. And I will watch to see what he will say. What he said is scripture. What I see is picture. 
I will watch to see what he says. Turn scripture into picture. It will cause you to venture in order to capture. <laughs> Turn scripture into picture. It will give you the capacity to venture in order to capture the future you must feature you must feature in turn it you want me to rewind it we have to move forward hallelujah very very important there are many people who believe who claim to believe one thing but their mind is settled on the opposite Hello? Think what you believe. Number four, declare what you believe. Your conviction is confirmed by your declaration. Your conviction is confirmed by your declaration. What you say confirms what you believe. In the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to verse 10. Romans 10, 8 to 10. Say, but what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. So whatever is in your heart, your mouth must confirm. Go, go on. That if you shall confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, since you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth, but with the mouth something must be said. Eh? You believe in the heart, you speak with the mouth. What is in your heart is useless until the mouth says it. Do you hear? Yes, sir. Shoba? Yes, sir. Echeba? Yes, sir. <laughs> Apo? <laughs> Natago? <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, what? He said, with the heart man believeth, with the mouth confession is made. It doesn't matter how much you claim to believe it. If you can't say it, that belief is not real. What is in the heart is useless until the mouth says it. I can't die before my time. If you believe it, say it. I shall fulfill my days. If you believe it, say it. The devil's agent that can take me out before my time has not been born. I am unstoppable. God has laid his hands upon me. I am a he suffered no man to do me wrong he rebuked him for my sake saying touch not my anointed I am too anointed to be touchable hey hey hey, hey. hallelujah you need some Agbero anointing to deal with Agbero devils take your seat Amen. You must declare what you believe. Don't forget this for as long as you live. What you believe is useless if you can't say it. Some people say, if I say it and the devil come after me in court, No, it doesn't work like that. God said, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do it. Numbers 14, 28. So he's waiting for you to say it, so he can do it. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 26. 
that confirmed the word of his servant. He performed the counsel of his messenger. So he's looking for what to confirm and what to perform. So don't be afraid. So in case I say I cannot be sick and the devil bring headache, what will I do? No. If you believe it enough, the devil that can bring it is not around. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. Declare what you believe. Number five, act what you believe. The meaning of it is act in line with your belief. You remember the story in Mark chapter 2 and in verse 4 to 5? When there was a man that was paralyzed, his friends brought him to Jesus and when they could not come near to him because of the press, they covered the roof where he was. When they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. He saw their faith. What did he see? Their action. Action is a magnet of manifestation. Say it again. Action from man is a magnet of manifestations from God. Action. When he saw their faith, so faith can be seen. Faith is not just something you believe, it's something you do. So your faith makes you to act in certain ways, in line with what you believe. You are acting audaciously instead of timidly where there is fear. You are acting ruggedly instead of beggarly where there was intimidation. Hallelujah. Match your action with your words. And then you will see the wonders of God. Match your action with your words. And then you will see the wonders of God. Don't be the man that says, Lord, please let rain not fall. And then you carry umbrella. <laughs> the prayer is answered. The rain will fall. You are already prepared. Hallelujah. Match your action with your word. And you will see the wonders of God. Don't arrive at the village and they say, oh, they say, this is a square that nobody can cross and you are moving about timidly. No. Faith is not something you believe. Something you believe is part of it, but beyond that, it is something you do. It's not just something you believe. In addition to what you believe, there is something that must be done. Finally, Celebrate what you believe. Don't wait for God to do it before you thank him. Thank him in advance. In the first service we said celebrate the answer before they arrive. Celebrate the promises of God. And in addition to that, celebrate the faithfulness of God. That if he said it, he will do it. So I am celebrating his faithfulness before he gets it done. Celebrate the almightiness of God. Jehoshaphat did not wait for the battle to be won. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 23, they began to praise God even when the enemy was standing. From verse 20, 22, the, and then the children of Ammon and Moab began to kill each other while they were praising. Psalm 56 verse 10 in God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Romans chapter 4 verse 20 where we read he said Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith and was giving glory to God. Before that marriage happens begin to dance as if it has happened already. Before you give birth to your child, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Begin to celebrate your, your child birth. Before you reach your next birthday, that birthday that nobody has ever reached in your family, 
begin to dance and celebrate because you will not only reach it, you will cross it by far. Am I communicating at all? Just, just celebrate and let God know and let God believe and let God be convinced that you believe in what you believe that you believe. And it must come to pass. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Never ever give the enemy a sense of victory. Never make the devil feel like he won a battle. Let the devil who has no father or mother, bastard devil know that he has not won a, a, a victory against you. And that as long as God is on the throne, he will never win. Is there anybody here who believes that if the devil was as powerful as he says he is, and as people made him to believe, you may not be alive by now. Anybody believe that? Stand on your feet in a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. Look at somebody by your side say congratulations for the word of God that you heard today. Your life can never be the same in Jesus name. Do you believe that? I celebrate you all. Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Now everybody watching via the satellite, the internet from all around the world. We have received a very, very serious word tonight. Listen to it again. Your life can never be the same. Like I said to you, people come from all over the world. We saw a family that came all the way from Germany the other day, from the UK and several other places right now in this service. And those of us on the ground can never, your life can never be the same. And those connected from all around the world, you will never be the same. You will fulfill your days. I introduced the Zambian ambassador to Nigeria, Dr. Solomon Jerry. And then later on, I also got to know that the Botswana Deputy High Commissioner is also here with him. And that is um, um, High Excellency Mfo Mogobe. Did I get the name? You are welcome. I didn't get it. You will let me know later. <laughs> you are welcome. We appreciate them. And we believe that Botswana shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. And Zambia shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Africa shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Nigeria shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Are you ready? Lift up your hands. Normally when we see nationals, especially people who have come from several countries with uh, our ICT, I'm sure you know what to do, but you haven't done it yet. And I'm sure you will do it again. Now, are you ready to hit the road celebrating? Lift your hands and say after me, say, Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy tonight. I come before you to appreciate you. Thank you. Give me the grace to know what to believe. The grace to believe what I know. The grace to think what I believe. The grace to declare what I believe. The grace to act what I believe and the grace to celebrate what I believe. I receive these multiple graces in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift your voice and speak to God. Father, I receive the grace, the grace, the engracement. I receive this grace.
Precious name. And we are going to go into celebration at the same time. Celebrating what? Celebrating God's faithfulness. In every word he has ever spoken to us. We are going to say, Lord, we believe you. And we believe it shall happen. While that is going on, our communion people will take position. While that is going on, everyone here today in need of total surrender to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven? You want today to mark a new day for you? You want Jesus to be Lord over your life? Everywhere you are in this assembly, you carry your Bibles and your bags, and you will be up in the front here. If you want to be genuinely born again, uh, three categories. You want to be genuinely born again, you are not yet, you will come forward, you are already coming. You want to have an addiction broken, a lifestyle, drunkenness, tobacco, lying, cheating, stealing, immorality, fornication, adultery, whatever lifestyle that you are living and you know that God is not happy with, you will also come forward and let that yoke be broken. And then, of course, you, you, you want to rededicate yourself to God. You have come out like this before, but you want to do it again. And, and say, I am not serious with God. I want to become serious. I don't want to play with my faith. I don't want the enemy to take me by surprise. You want to step forward here and we shall pray for you. God bless you. And we are going to take that song. I hail you, oh my life giver. I hail you, oh my preserver. The song that God gave to us and your preservation, no devil can stamper with it. It's a song of preservation. That it is not by my strength and my might I am alive. He is the reason why I am alive. Not by my wisdom, not by my carefulness. When I passed through things, I didn't know how I could have come out. He knew what to do. He didn't leave me to myself. When I took steps, I shouldn't have taken. What a faithful God. As you sing the song, let me show you think on the wordings because it's very powerful. Hallelujah. Those of you on your knees, God bless you. Place your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sins. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. From today, forward ever. Backward never. Help me to live for you. Help me to live, do your will. Thank you, Lord, for hearing me. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of sin broken and the grace to live for God be relieved upon you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Celebration.